Hello everyone, Steve here, back again with another video about tabletop baseball. The topic of today's uh, video is 50-50 uh, math in baseball sims. Uh, this is uh, a topic that I think many of you are very familiar with. Um, a lot of baseball sims have what's called a 50-50 engine, which simply means that on any given plate appearance, um, a batter has 50% chance of, of controlling the at-bat, or the pitcher has 50% chance of controlling the at-bat. Um, this is really not intended to be a video about Stratomatic, but uh, just for illustration, you can see on the screen here, I have um, a batter card on the left and a pitcher card on the right, and you see uh, the dice there, uh, 3d6 dice, one of them is of a different color. You roll the, in this case, the white die. And if it's one, two, or three, you read the results off the appropriate column in the batter card. And if the white die is four, five, or six, you read the appropriate result uh, off the appropriate column in the pitcher card. So it's, it's as about a pure of a 50-50 uh, engine or, or, or design that you, that you can have. So, um, you know, I, I I put together cards for a lot of different Sims. Um, I haven't actually put together cards for Stratomatic, although uh, I have my own Sim that that uh, I, I came up with over 40 years ago, and some of the math is is the same as Strat math. We'll talk about that. Um, but when you're building the cards, uh, what the math uh, that you need to employ is not always immediately obvious. So the main purpose of this video is to uh, explain how you do that math. And then I'll, I'll also talk about some of the uh, weaknesses, I guess I would say, of the 50-50 system. My goal is not to uh, rehash old debates. Um, a lot of people have very strong feelings on this subject. Um, this is more to just be informative. That said, as always, comments are welcome. Uh, you can like and subscribe if you want, but, but mainly uh, I just like to promote discussion. So with that, I am going to show an example of how the 50-50 math works. And I'm going to use Nolan Ryan, 1973. So he had quite an amazing year in 1973. He was pitching for the Angels and he had 383 strikeouts in 326 innings pitched. So um, that's about 10, 10 and a half uh, per, per game, I think. Uh, but anyways, strikeouts well, well above innings pitched. And on a percentage basis, his uh, strikeout percent uh, is 28.3%. So Roughly 28.3% of everybody that came to the plate uh, would strike out against Ryan, which at that time was, was an extremely high percentage. And by comparison, you can see the American League average strikeout percent was 13.2% that year. Um, so you would think if you're building a, you know, a Nolan Ryan card, what you would do is you would take 28.3% uh, of his... Uh, dice roll chances on, on the card, however the card is constructed. And that's how many or what percentage you would would assign to strikeouts. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that's not going to work because if you do what I just described, um, his strikeout percentage is only going to be 20.75%. And I've tried to explain how that, that is, but half the time... He'll strike out batters at a rate of 28.3 when it's on his card. And the other half the time, uh, the batter card will apply. And so uh, the league average strikeout percent rate is what he would experiment, uh, I'm sorry, experience. And, and so when you, when you blend them together, he's not going to get to 28.3%. So you do have to do what I call 50-50 math to figure out what's the right percentage allocation to put on Nolan Ryan's card for strikeouts. So 
as it turns out, it needs to be a lot higher. Uh, his strikeout percent actually needs to be 43% of his chances on his card. Um, and this is kind of the proof. So if, if it is 43.4 uh, half the time and 13.2 the other half the time, when you blend that all together, that's going to come out to 28.3%. And uh, you may want to pause the video here, but this is a, a very shortcut, simpler version of the math uh, that how, how you come out with uh, the 43.4. And basically, you double his strikeout rate and then subtract the league average rate. If you do some algebra, you may come up with a slightly different uh, form of this formula, but you'll get the same, same answer. Uh, but this is a, actually a formula that I came up with a long time ago, which we'll talk about. But that's, that's how you, you get there. So if you're trying to do your own cards or figure out your own math, that's, uh, that's what you would do. So uh, since we're on Nolan Ryan, uh, let's try to see uh, if this holds up with the Stratomatic card. And again, this isn't really intended to be a Stratomatic video, but... But um, this is as good as an example as any. So sorry for the, um, the bad image of Nolan Ryan's 1973 card, but I've highlighted in red all the strikeouts I could find on his card, and you can see there are a lot of them, especially in columns five and six, where he has strikeouts uh, concentrated in the most likely dice rolls. So... Um, on a card like this, with three columns and two D6 dice, you're going to have 108 chances. Um, and I went and added up all the strikeout chances that are in red there uh, for Nolan Ryan, and there were 47. And so um, I held my breath, but I divided 47 by 108, and sure enough, it came out to 40.5%. 40 uh, is the rate of strikeouts on his card. Um, and if, if you remember from the prior page, um, it's it's 43.4. Um, so it didn't work out exactly right, um, but that's really not my, my point here. Um, my, my real point here is, and actually I think I might actually have a, typo here. I think 47 divided by 108 is probably 45.5. So I think maybe it did actually work out right. Apologies. It seems like every one of these videos I do, I come up, uh, I find a mistake on the chart or on the slide. Uh, you can, you can redo the math yourself. Uh, the reason why I held my breath when I, when I did this example is especially with Stratomatic, the pitcher cards in particular, uh, can have some nuances in terms of what gets allocated to the card, mainly because there's, uh, you can see it in the middle column there, but there's a uh, what's called a catcher's card X, which I think is uh, what drives a, uh, a defensive check, and there might be some other defensive checks as well. And so that may influence what gets allocated to, to the chart. So... Um, so there you have it. That's, that's the main, main point of what I wanted to explain here is how that math works and how it, it shows up in, in real life. Uh, not, not always obvious until you've, until you've uh, looked at it and, and messed with it. Um, I will say, you know, when I was doing my, my own sim back in 1979, um, I had actually documented this concept. Uh, you don't have to read this, but I had documented this concept in some uh, documentation that I had written up and my wife was generous enough to, to, um, to type it up for me. She was, uh, I guess, young and in love. In any case, um, I, I documented, you know, the need for this so-called 50-50 math and, and documented the formula that you, you need to do it, which is in this second box. In any event, um, again, not to be controversial, but there are some criticisms out there of the 50-50 engines. Um, the main one, I think, or one main one, is that there's little to no pitcher-batter interaction. Some more modern games have attempted to, um, to fix that. 
I would say uh, Payoff Pitch comes to mind. Uh, even the old Sports Illustrated baseball game comes to mind where, where you check the pitcher first before potentially moving on to the batter. Um, they also had Status Pro, uh, which kind of uh, potentially gave the pitcher more influence. Uh, the, the reality of strat Status Pro is that the underlying math really is based on the same principles as as this 50-50 math that I've just talked about, but you'll have to watch my other videos uh, to hear about that. I think the other uh, example uh, of this is uh, somebody will say, well, you bring in a strong closer, but all the rolls are on the batter card and, and the pitcher never gets to influence the result. So you might as well have just brought in your worst pitcher. Now, of course, over time, that strong closer is going to uh, get his fair share of um, control of, of the plate appearance, but that is a commonly voiced criticism. I think the other very commonly voiced criticism is that there are certain out outlier performances that you can't ac accurately replicate in the 50-50 model, particularly infrequent results. So uh, you'll see some names down below that, that fit that category. So I'm going to give some some more examples, uh, which which kind of illustrate that. So first is Willie Sargent, 1971. He actually is not an outlier, or if he is, he's an outlier because he has lots of strikeouts. He struck out at a rate of 26.3% in 1971, uh, not quite double the league average. Uh, so on his card, he actually needs strikeouts at a rate of 38.2%. His walks were also uh, a little above the league average if you, if you exclude uh, intentional walks. Uh, so again, instead of 10.8% walk percentage, he needs 14.3%. And now for three outlier examples where, where, where there is an issue, the, the, the one that's uh, cited commonly is Nellie Fox. Uh, he struck out in 1951 in only 1.6% of his plate appearances. Uh, the league grade at that time was 9.6%. So if you were going to accurately depict his strikeouts on his card, he would have to have a negative 6.4% allocation to, um, to strikeouts and at least in most sims, there's really no way to do that. So you'll just build his card with no strikeout chances. But what that means is he's probably going to have close to 5% of his plate appearances in your replay is, are going to be strikeouts. That bothers a lot of people. Um, understandable. Um, the reality is the sim most likely will just make it some other kind of out. And um, his batting average will be fine. And, and so on, but that, that, that tends to be bothers for, bothersome uh, for some people. Not so much for me, but, but it is kind of is what it is. A um, couple of other examples. You have Greg Maddox at the bottom there. In 1995, he walked only 2.6% of the batters he faced by my calculations, uh, whereas uh, the league average was 7.8% walks per plate, plate, plate appearance. So to accurately depict his card, he would need to have an allocation of negative 2.6% to walks. Again, um, in most sims, that's really not practical or possible. So he would have zero walks and he would probably um, end up with walks at a rate of about um, almost 4% of uh, of the batters he faced. Um, that's a little more troublesome to me, but um, not, not necessarily the end of the world. My last example is Manny Sanguian. Um, Manny, um, Manny, he was a free swinger. He had a good eye. Uh, he put the bat on the ball. He seldom struck out, as you can see, and even less frequently walked. So he's not, not taking a lot of pitches. And so for both strikeouts and walks, the, the, the mathematical allocation 
to, to those chances would be negative. And again, you, you, can't, you can't do that. So again, that's, that's kind of the common complaint about a 50-50 engine. Uh, it really it does only apply to outliers, um, and um, some people can live with that, and some people can't. Uh, I, I think I've already expressed kind of my, my feelings on the topic. You know, the, the reality, and we're not going to talk about it much here, but 50-50 math also applies to home run allocations and triples and doubles, and, and uh, so you might get a guy that never hit a triple in, in real life, but he may get a triple coming off the pitcher card. One thing Stratomatic did try to do uh, as it relates to home runs is um, kind of minimize the, 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 the likelihood of a weaker hitter uh, getting a home run off the pitcher card. So here you have Gene Alley. He was a part-time shortstop in 1971. He had, I think, six home runs on the year, so he did hit some. And you see at the top of column two, he, he does have one home run chance out of 108 on his own card. Uh, you can't see it very well, but I've circled it in red, but he has a power rating. And and in, in starting with the advanced version of Stratomatic, they did give power ratings to batters, and it's either a W for weak or an N for normal. And as I understand it, if there's a home run on the pitcher card, but the batter is has a weak power rating, then that home run gets changed to some other result, I think an, another another type of hit. So that's kind of the one exception that I know of in Strat where they where they do um, take take that into account. If you'll bear with me uh, one moment, you know, as it relates back to my own sim, um, this this was kind of my original chart from over 40 years ago. And if you rolled a four on the on the main dice, uh, that, that applied to the pitcher strikeout rating that you would check. And if you see 412 to 415, almost every bat, every pitcher would, would get a strikeout there, even, even the, the bad ones, with an exception, and that's what the double asterisk is. And so even, even back then, I, I knew there was a case where, um, you know, it would be nice to be able to interact the pitcher and the batter. And so this is, says if, if the batter has a strike strikeout rating of triple A, then, um, you know, you're not, you're, you're not going to strike him out, um, with a roll of 412 to, to 415. It's just a way to, to attempt to integrate, uh, the pitcher and the batter, uh, charts, if you will. Uh, I'm not sure how mathematically effective that was, but uh, again, it was just a way to, to try to acknowledge something I, I recognized at the time. I think just to close, uh, I've shown this chart before, but there's a lot of trade-offs when you're building a sim. Uh, there's, there's complexity and statistical accuracy and realism, and, and those can, can influence uh, various factors, uh, how fun it is to play, does it evoke any nostalgia, but I think if you look at the right side of this triangle, this is what we're talking about today, is you could probably do a lot to enhance the st statistical accuracy of a 50-50 sim, um, but you might introduce a lot of complexity, uh, maybe an extra dice roll or, or special codes or something, and that would probably really slow down the, the, the flow of, of the play. And, and so, you know, the game designer has to, you know, make a decision, make, make that trade off and, and figure out, um, is, is it worth it? Likewise, you as a gamer have to make a decision as to whether, um, you know, you're leaning more toward, um, statistical accuracy and, and more complexity, or you want a simpler game and you'll, you'll just deal with, with, with the less, less, uh, statistical accuracy. So that's all I wanted to talk about. Again, didn't want to generate controversy. Uh, if you have thoughts, uh, let me know. Again, the main, main goal here was just to explain how the math works. Thanks for listening. Bye.